you were in the South Pole from 2010 to 2011. Let's talk about what you were doing down there. You got it. What were you doing down there? I was contracted for the summer season as a plumber. I did well enough in my summer season to garner a winter contract as well, which got me my full year's stay. I was also tasked with being a firefighter. I was a lead on the firefighting team, and because of that dual role capacity, I physically held a key that opened every single door in the facility. I had complete access to every compartment they manufactured. That was a, a rare position to be in. What is, what are you blowing the whistle on? That there are technologies at the South Pole Station that people can't even consider that exist on this planet. Like what? Directed energy weapon systems is something that people need to get into their vocabulary fast. The ice cube neutrino detector is not simply a passive listening device as presented for the science that they're claiming it to do. It also has the capacity to transmit. There are um, embedded in the ice what are called digital optical modules, DOMs. They're about the size of a basketball. The array embedded in the ice is one kilometer by one kilometer by one kilometer. It is the world's largest telescope. And now because we have proven that it can transmit, it's the world's largest directed energy weapons system. It is responsible for the earthquakes in Christchurch, New Zealand in 2011 on the front end of the year. How do you know for a fact that that was responsible for that? Because I was present and I have gone over this with the pertinent people that I will not be releasing their names. Okay. But I was on the team, let's just say, and I've confirmed this. Well, I've provided documentation from the actual manufacturer specs. So this unit was um, constructed, operated, and maintained by the University of Wisconsin. And just like every other device on the planet, whether you're driving an M1 Abrams tank or operating the ice cube neutrino detector, there's um, operator's manuals that tell you how things work. Right there in that information, free for everybody to find. I found it myself. Um, I was directed to find it, I'll put it that way, and release this information. And it states very clearly that each one of these DOMs can transmit at 2,047 volts each. So these are currently the facts of life. How do you know, I mean, how do you, what I, well, I guess what I'm asking is how did it even come to your attention that this triggered an earthquake? If you're at the South Pole and New Zealand had an earthquake, I mean, how did you know it came from the South Pole? Without divulging names, Without divulging names. I could only say that it was communicated to me from team members that were present and fully read in at the time that they were aware. And since that time... Um, at the immediate, like the same day? Oh, absolutely. It was understood. Well, what was said? That we accidentally hit Christchurch, New Zealand twice when they were trying to fire up this weapon for the first time that it was, it was friendly fire, it was not on purpose, but it occurred, that the system is designed for that, and it was just friendly fire, so incidental. This is a, so this is a telescope? That sounds like a, is it a telescope? Absolutely, is it? It, is, it is a neutrino detector, for sure. It can accomplish its primary purpose. It can also transmit and then provide a, a multifaceted platform for directed energy weapons systems. Do you have any idea how the earthquake was initiated? From misfiring the system. Where did, I mean... Where were they targeting? Yes. I don't know. Does it go into the earth? Does uh, it go can, into the atmosphere? It can definitely go through the earth. I would consider that it might be able to do stuff in the atmosphere. I haven't heard that statement laid at its feet. Um, but I wouldn't put it past it. I don't want to try to limit the functions of this device by my imagination or experience. I believe that's one of the problems with directed energy weapons is they are not like standard weapons of old where you have a gun and a particular caliber bullet, you pull the trigger and it does one thing. These platforms are way more complex than that. They do a lot of things. What else do they do? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this system, additionally, in regards to the neutrinos, 
It detects the neutrinos that are apparently coming off of the new exotic propulsion systems for either off-world UFOs or reverse engineered stuff on our planet. What is neutrino? Uh, neutrino is a near massless particle that goes at, close, or beyond the speed of light. It is so small that it can pass between the electron shell and the nucleus of pretty much every atom on the planet. In the capacity of being detected at the South Pole Station, when the neutrino impacts the nucleus of the water molecule of the ice in the glaciers at the pole, a reaction occurs. The nucleus and the neutrino become destroyed, a muon is created and ejected, and a blue flash of light known as Cherenkov radiation flashes in the ice, and that's what the DOMS, the digital optical modules, are detecting. That's their primary purpose as presented. Now, whether that neutrino comes from a quasar out in space or a uh, exotic propelled engine off of vehicles that aren't being discussed contemporarily, it detects it. Thus making it basically an air traffic control center for all non-discussed vehicles on this planet. So just like we have all the other air traffic on the planet and it's being completely observed and attended to, there's just another level of craft on this planet and another level of air traffic control tower that exists. This is that facility. Back to back to tracking neutrinos. Mm -hmm. What is what is that? Why are they tracking those? Oh, for the purposes of science, they're claiming that there's uh, a lot to be ascertained by understanding the difference between um, low power and high power neutrino ejections from cosmic occurrences. It's about that vague. This is what they spend our tax dollars on. Let's talk about the, well, what else do they do? Uh, the device is also um, for faster than light communications, quantum entangled communications at great distance. In, I guess it was the late 80s or early 90s, Gary McKinnon hacked NASA. And he found that we, he found the list of the off-world space fleet and the captains of the ships respectively. We have a fleet out there. If we have a fleet out there, we need to communicate with them. This is that facility. Can you explain quantum entanglement communications? <laughs> yes, I don't think most people understand what I'm about to say anyway. <laughs> But I will. Um, the way quantum entanglement works is that you can take uh, you can take two particles, quantum entangle them, and then take those two particles and move them at any distance in the cosmos. And let's just say, for example, if you quantum entangle two electrons and you have them spinning in the same direction, and then you take one of those electrons and you shoot that thing out a hundred thousand light years from the original. If you then rotate the spin on the one electron, if you, if you modify it so that its spin changes, the quantum entangled electron at any distance will simultaneously, in no time, switch its rotation also because they're quantum entangled. So these communication systems are taking advantage of this aspect of quantum mechanics that most people can't wrap their heads around and this is what they're utilizing. It's just the new level of science that affords us the ability to communicate at any distance instantaneously. I've heard about this. I've tried to dig into it and it's hard to understand. It is hard to understand. Um, it would be, my, my best way to put it is that when electricity first came out, it was very hard for a lot of people to understand what Nikola Tesla was getting at. But we can, we still, everyone was using it before they even understood it. And this is just where we are right now. It's just a new technology. It's a new conversation. People don't have to understand it yet. They just have to realize it's real. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.